Thank you for joining us in the Yetter Solution Center. Our Solution Center videos discuss, explore, and evaluate the latest Yetter innovations while tackling the tough agronomy issues our industry faces. Hi, I'm Alex Rubush with Yetter Farm Equipment. We've been getting a lot of phone calls over how to install the twister closing wheels and as well as what is the proper spacing for these or should we have them set at. So we kind of just want to go through step by step the, the process to get them installed. What you need, um, you can get the the manual which goes over this in pretty good detail uh, is available on our website. Outside of that about the only tools you're going to need is a 15 16 impact and wrench. So we'll get started. Now after you have your old closing wheels off you want to be sure to save the original hardware. That includes to so save your bolt and nut and the bushings. There should be a bushing and a washer on a John Deere row unit that comes with, with the stock hardware. Now that will vary a little bit from row unit to row unit what, what hardware comes stock uh, as far as a Kinsey or a White or a John Deere but you'll want to save that because we will reuse that. So now that you've got your other uh, closing wheels taken off, uh, it's time to install the twisters. The one thing I want to reference is that there is a left-handed and a right-handed wheel. And there is a indicator or a stamp right on the tooth of the wheel that says L or the other side is R. Those obviously, the L goes on the left-handed side, R goes on the right-handed side. Whether the L or the R is facing in or facing out doesn't really matter as long as you've got the left-handed wheel on the left side, right handed on the right side. So we'll get those installed uh, just using your existing hardware and the existing bolt. Now that you've got them installed, find the narrowest point at the bottom. And my trick is I normally rock the wheels back and forth a little and you can kind of feel when they get to the narrowest point. Once you've got them to the narrowest point, measure from the inside of the bottom tooth here to the inside of the other tooth to get your spacing. And we want that around an inch and a quarter, um, at least for a starting point. So I'm pretty close on these, right there around an inch and a quarter. We get some questions on what is the proper spacing. Do they always need to be spaced at an inch and a quarter? An inch and a quarter is the, the width that we want you to start at. That's the most common, uh, the most consistent. In our testing, that's, that's the width that we, we have had the most success at. Now, we do have some scenarios where we want them spaced wider or maybe even possibly a little narrower. We do send an extra washer with the kit that you probably won't use, but that is to space them wider if you need them. If you've got some contours, um, we recommend that you space them a little bit wider if you're doing a lot of contour farming around terraces, what have you. Um, also, another reason to space them wider is if you are cranking your down pressure up pretty high and still having troubles getting rid of that air pocket at seed depth, we want you to space them a little wider. If you are doing a decent job of crushing your sidewall and getting soil firmed around the seed at seed depth, but the top of your trench is kind of open a little bit, that would be a scenario where we want to space them a little closer together or narrower. Um, but it's, it's one of those things we get asked, where do they need to be? The only really way to tell is to get out and dig and check after you've started planting um, or even, you know, if the conditions are fit but the calendar isn't right, get out there and sink it in the field and, and just see what your seed trench looks like. One thing I want to note is that cast planters with cast closing systems, a cast closing wheel arm here, are pretty consistent row to row. Uh, we have noticed that on ones that are just formed metal, there is a decent amount of variation row to row. So. If you've got a formed metal one, you may want to check every single row. Uh, if you've got a cast closing wheel, I would still recommend checking several rows as you go across your planter, even after you've found what spacers it takes to get the width you need. Now we also get questions on how to properly dig a seed trench. Um, 
The one way we normally recommend is take a putty knife, about a four inch putty knife, and stick it perpendicular in the row that you're planting. After you've done that, dig away from one side of it and then pull that out. And that gives you a perfect snapshot of what you've got in that seed trench. It makes it a lot easier to identify air pockets. You don't want to be able to find any indication of the sidewall. More or less, the harder it is to find your seed trench and to find your seed, the better you're doing of closing up your seed trench. If you've got any other questions, you know, we're always available by phone or email. So you can give us a holler if you've got any more questions. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to check out the complete Yetter Solutions Center playlist at youtube.com slash yetterco. And as always, we're here to help you find profitable solutions for your operation. If you need more information or have a topic idea for a future episode, drop an email to our Solutions Center team at solutions at yettercocom